Hi everyone, my name is Kate and I'm a channel marketing manager here at BDS Solutions. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about display merchandising inside of retail stores. So why is this so important right now? Well, we know that display presence is directly related to sales performance. And when your displays aren't present, sales are lost. And actually 76% of consumers would walk away from a display just based on its appearance alone. So here at BDS, retail merchandising is a core solution that we've offered over the last 35 years and we've seen it all working in categories from consumer electronics to health and beauty, apparel, home appliance, and more. So today I'm really excited to be talking with Lisa Nichols, who is a senior director over our merchandising and break fix services. She has over 18 years of experience in retail operations and has been with BDS for the last eight. So when it comes to retail ops, execution strategies, this is who you want to hear from. She currently oversees our continuity-based programs in a major retailer, main, managing over 150,000 displays on a weekly basis. So with one of the busiest times quickly approaching in retail, store traffic starting to increase exponentially, I wanted to talk with Lisa and peel back the curtain on what's happening behind the scenes at retail and specifically merchandising services and how brands, maybe like you, can prepare and elevate for the rest of the year and into 2022. I really enjoyed learning all things retail merchandising from Lisa, and I'm really excited for her to be able to share her knowledge with you too. So without further ado, here's Lisa. Okay. Hey, Lisa. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Happy to join. Yeah. So today I want to talk a little bit about your expertise with retail merchandising programs. But before we get into it, could you share a little bit more about you and your role and the team that you manage? Yeah, absolutely. So as you spoke to, I'm the Senior Director of Client Services for a major retailer program. And I sit within the Break Fix Merchandising and Installation Division of BDS. So our division includes both dedicated and syndicated rep teams to help service the needs of retailers as well as brands. So as far as size goes for our team, um, we hit on average of over 5,000 stores on a weekly basis. And this um, rep count for our team, it really just depends on the time of year. So we have a core team that um, really services throughout the year. And then for our seasonal ramp up as well, we hire additional people and really train them up to be able to be experts within retail. That's great. And it's a nationwide team of, of experts, right? Not just regionally focused. Absolutely. So throughout the nation, um, Hawaii, well, we also hit a little bit of international as well. Um, so we're ready to help set, um, we're ready to help different brands. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we know right now the importance of a brand being able to deliver a seamless experience, no matter which retailer or place they're being represented is so critically important. So not just the consumers that maybe have an affinity toward that brand that have already done their product research online and just want to do, you know, the purchase in store, but also the passerby's attention. So someone who walked into maybe a big box retailer with the intention of buying one thing, uh, but your brand or display caught their eye and it's an opportunity for um, add-on. So an impulse purchases, right? And I know there's that viral joke that you walk into like a Whole Foods or a Bed Bath and & Beyond and you're going in there to buy one thing and then walk out spending you know, $300 later. And one of the things that um, I've learned from you is that it's not always on the retailer or the in-store teams to actually make sure that every brand display is fully present in the store. Mm -hmm. It's actually on the brand. So can you tell us a little bit more about how we support brands and retailers and specifically through these merchandising services that we offer? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, a multitude of services that you've spoken to. Um, what, one of the major things that we do is our break fix program where we're servicing displays out there in retail. As part of that, um, what we like to recommend also is additional merchandising support. So that way, not just the display is up and functional, but the surrounding product, the surrounding signage, all of that is ready to go. That is just so essential, um, especially during this holiday season, during the supply chain issues that are going on, that customers, when they're out there in store, they're able to 
um, see the product, see it on the shelf, see it with the right price, and make sure that it's available for them. So our team is able to make sure that that product is ready for a consumer at a retail environment. So for our team, it can be really, it depends on the scope and the need of each brand and each retailer, but really making sure that we're pulling that product forward, pulling it out of back rooms, making sure price and compliance is there, and really making sure that it's a, a guest-facing experience. I love that. It's like delivering on the, the final two feet of actually being able to grab a product and convert the sale right there. Absolutely. Um, so that said, I know that there are a lot of different types of displays within a retailer. Are there, uh, you know, one specific type of display that we service or um, I guess what types of displays are we typically working on, both from a break, fix and merchandising standpoint? Yeah, it's across the board. So in a, kind of stepping back one level, like even from our installation services, those are when we're installing large, large displays, multi-rep teams, maybe even overnight services. For break, fix, break, fix really is, servicing standard um, live or interactive displays in stores. So making sure that displays that consumers can touch, feel, hear, um, apply all their senses against are up and functioning. So making sure that we're either doing maintenance work on that or um, if we get a, depending upon the program, if there's a report that something's broken, going out and fixing it, delivering the right parts. There's also the non-interactive displays that is almost like you set and it, stays there. There's not an interactivity, uh, interactive element to that, but at the same time, it needs to be there for uh, the guests to see. Um, and then beyond that, for those merchandising programs um, and the merchandising support that we're offering, that really applies to the product that's beneath the, the displays, making sure that the signage mm -hmm. is there. If there's a core get out, um, just making sure that as much as possible, we're preparing that um, to have products so that way it can be sold. That's great. And I know we work with brands a lot of the time where it's not just in one location in a store, like they may have product needs on a table display and a different set of product needs on a inline display. So I know that we, you know, really work with brands to customize the scope of the project and then yeah. deliver on the labor based on those needs. Absolutely. And that's something that we partner with the brands and the retailers as well. So knowing by store what should be in each store. So that way it's the most efficient visit possible for the brand. Yes. I know efficiency is everything in this space. So that's great. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is consistency. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether a brand is just launching a pilot program, maybe in a handful of stores, or if this is a full retail chain rollout, like we mentioned earlier with nationwide presence at different stores. So how does our team, your team operate in making sure that there's consistency um, ac across the brand, no matter where they're being represented, whether it's me walking into a store over here in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm located, or you going into the same store shopping for the same brand in Orange County? Yeah, and that really starts with um, the preparation of the projects and the work that we execute. So working with the brand to really understand what the needs are, what's on planogram, what is required. And then on the back end, our reps are from our syndicated team. Like these are people that are ongoing. It's not a higher up situation for each project. They're commonly in retailers. They commonly know the processes and the protocols. But what we do is for the individual projects, we also partner them with our um, content team to make sure that they know exactly what's going on. We have training videos, training links, visuals, planograms, like everything that our team needs to make sure that in store, it's a consistent experience and aligns to what the brand and the retailer is expecting. That is the goal for each and every rep, regardless of where they are within the nation. Yeah. And one of the coolest things that I've been able to kind of shadow or, or witness is the content team. Um, it was a new project rollout for a brand and they worked hand in hand with the display manufacturer and actually had that display shipped to our warehouse where we could do a display shakedown. So not only did the team set it up, but they also took it apart and proactively identified any issues that they could foresee with no. you know, how the display would be operating in store. And all of that is captured through video so that our our reps who are maintenancing those displays always have access to that, which is awesome. Yeah, visuals are key. And then just as one quick call out, just as a teaser, um, our team this year, because of everything that happened in 2020, moved to much more uh, virtual efforts in some of the training. 
So we have um, been partnering with retailers and brands to have a little bit of that virtual element of training as well. So even some of our training um, for our continuity programs, we're able to have the rep in a virtual world walk into that space as whether a supplemental or refresh training above and beyond the in-person trainings that they receive. So it's a really cool experience that's evolving. Wow, that's awesome. We love to hear that. So that's a great transition. And I want to talk a little bit about the labor market right now. And we know it's been really tough for both brand partners and retailers and hiring and maintaining, um, especially talent in the stores. Yeah. So I know that we have a, a put together an amazing team of merchandising specialists um, that are lined up to support our brand partners through Q4 and into 2022. So can you speak a little bit more about the team and how a BDS can come in and, and support into our teams, um, you know, regarding the gaps that they may be feeling in Q4 too? Yeah, the great thing about the BDS labor on the syndicated team is this is a team that um, granted the size of it can flex based upon what's going on that time of year, but the support of that team, the field leadership, um, the content developers, the trainers, the, the client service team, all that support is there ongoing to really make sure that when we get a new project and it hits, we're able to go and go quickly. Um, we're able to have that national support um, that even if there's a gap somewhere out in retail, our team is there to help support, step in and make sure that it is a consistent look and feel even if there's some type of gap that a brand is seeing. Yeah. And that actually transitions me into my next topic that I wanted to talk to you about. But our team of merchandising experts, they, they're extremely well knowledgeable and actually delivering the merchandising services, but they're also retail pros too. And they've been for working in retail environments for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had the opportunity to shadow one of our uh, merchandising experts. Her name is Jane. So shout out to Jane if she's watching this right now. Um, but I was able to ride along with her um, for a actual continuity based project in a consumer electronics department in a major mm -hmm. retailer. And um, of course, uh, you know, all the services that she delivered was great. I mean, she was so familiar with how to work with multiple displays and products across that category. But one of the things that really stood out to me was the relationship that she had with the in-store team. So um, upon visit, of course, going through her audit, there were a couple of things that came up that she was able to troubleshoot with uh, store team leaders right away and also uh, create a mitigation plan for how those were going to get solved. And this all happened within a matter of five minutes. And I really took away how appreciative those leaders were in the store team at how organized and efficient the visit was because we know the, the hustle and bustle of retail and especially in Q4 right now, you have to be working as efficient and seamless as possible. So mm -hmm. that was really great to see. So that said, can you give me a little bit more information on the types of protocols or processes that our merchandising experts follow uh, whenever they are servicing a brand's display inside of a retailer? Yeah, absolutely. And just to touch on the relationship build, because um Across the board, I would say that's one of the number one things that helps separate BDS is our pre-existing relationships in stores. Um, whether it's talking to the receiving department in the back room to reduce back room loss, whether it is knowing the right people to talk to in store teams, if there is an issue that kind of needs to be worked through. So that way, at the end of the day, the brand's product can be placed. That's just vital for our team. Um, and then as far as their ongoing protocol in stores, um, we try to make sure that it's specific to retail, of course, but um, commonly they'll go into store, they're, check, they're checking in, they're signing the log books. But then when they get into the department that they're going to be working on, um, for our team, they have, um, whether we call them a, a call form or a rep survey, but all of that is preloaded with the brand's information that they're looking to, one, get answers back on, so different question sets that we can answer in a consistent manner photo captures, things like that. But also those, um, as we spoke to before, like the training. So training, images, anything like that, that we can really prepare our team to have a successful visit in store, that's critical. And then, however, we can also, for the more complicated displays, um, we help establish the parts process. We have a support center. We really just try to make sure that that rep is set up for success because at the end of the day, that's success for the brand and the retailer as well. Yeah. 
And that's really, that's a great point. It's like the, the whole ecosystem of what goes into maintaining the display is all under the BDS umbrella. So we can manage the parts piece, the warehouse piece, mm -hmm. how parts are actually delivered into the store, and then the process of the rep picking them up and, and going to, you know, deliver on the presence of that display. Yeah. So that's awesome. For any new projects or new brands um, that might be interested in having a merchandising program set up and maybe even for Q4 as the busiest time of year in retail, what is our, our process or speed to start time in terms of being able to get a new project up and going? Well, for the respect of everybody that works with me, I'm going to say standard is six to eight weeks, but we've also been known to do it much sooner than that. The lead time really helps to make sure that everything's fully buttoned up, especially if there's shipments coming in, um, even contract signatures, NDAs, anything that needs to happen. Lead time is very helpful for that. That being said, um, we have a field force ready to go. We're very quick to move. So we have been known to do it sooner than that. But I don't want to get myself in trouble with my team. <laughs> Well, that's perfect. I think that sounds great. I mean, even still with that timeline, there is time to uh, start the conversation and potentially have projects set up just in time for Black Friday. Or even, I know you and I have talked about this, but yeah. what happens after Black Friday? Yeah. And for that, like the key point of that, so much of merchandising and ramp up really is to make sure everything's ready for Black Friday, right? Like that's where so much of the effort's behind. But what we see year over year is after that point of, Customers flocking in, getting what they need, and the increased traffic over the time between Black Friday through Christmas, that's also a time that we see an ongoing need for merchandising. So making sure that we're getting into stores, and it varies by cadence for each brand, but for the brands that choose weekly, that means we're in there weekly, making sure that your product is pulled out of the back room, it's there, it's available, the price is correct, and you have that sense of security that as much as you can do to make sure that your product is there for customers in store, it's being done. Yeah. And I think a big thing with that too is the brand partners aren't being left in the dark, even though it's not their labor force going into the teams, but like the the speed in which you're receiving results after our team is in there. So for for a project where our team is, you know, servicing a display on a weekly basis, how quickly can brands expect to start to see results, not just not just uh, the reports on performance, but also, or I'm sorry, not just the reports, but also the lift in performance on their displays. So pretty immediately, because when we're out there doing the visits in stores, that impact is immediate as, as much as it aligns to the date that we're in store. So if we're there, we're able to make an impact, we're able to place product and make sure it's ready to go. Those sales should be pretty much immediate in in how that aligns to the work that we're doing in store. When your displays aren't present, sales are lost. <laughs> Tagline for this. So, well, Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all of that great information with me. It was extremely helpful. Um, and I just want to end on if you are a brand or a broker or consultant um, and you are looking for merchandising uh, services or even merchandising overlay services, uh, for the back half of this year and into 2022, we would love to start a conversation with you. So there is a link that is going to be directly below this video that you can click and fill out the contact form, and we will absolutely be in touch with you very soon. So all of that said, Lisa, anything else you want to leave us with? I just want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us today to listen in. Thank you, Kate, for your time. I hope everybody has a wonderful and successful holiday season and healthy. Awesome. Yes, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you.